because they left open from yesterday. Yeah. 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 Good morning. Welcome to worship. I invite you to stand. And uh, our reading this morning is from Psalm 84, verses 1 to 2, and verse 4. Please stand. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty! My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Thank you. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you very much for this opportunity to worship you and knowing that we come from all kinds of different times and places. And we just ask, Lord, that you would bind us together by the power of your Holy Spirit as we worship you and serve you. And we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord God, we thank you for this opportunity to worship you and to praise you, and we thank you, Lord, for your kindness and your making it possible for us to gather. Lord, bring to our attention this time those things which we need to confess before you, the things which we have done wrong, the things, ways in which we have sinned. Amen. Merciful God and Heavenly Father, whose grace endures to all generations, you are patient and long-suffering and will forgive the sins and transgressions of those who truly repent. Look with compassion upon your people and hear their supplications. We have sinned against you and are unworthy of your goodness and love. Remember not our transgressions, have mercy upon us and help us, O God. Grant us remission of all our sins and give us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may amend our ways and with you obtain everlasting life. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear these words from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 7 8. Paul wrote, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. Amen. Our first reading today is found in the book of Joshua, chapter 24, verses 1 through 2a, and continuing on at verses 14 through 18. Joshua 24. Then, G then Joshua assembled all the tribes of Israel at Sheshem. He summoned the elders, the leaders, the judges, and officials of Israel and they presented themselves before God. Joshua said to all the people, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Long ago your forefathers inclined Terah, the father of Abraham, and Nahar, lived beyond the river, and going on at 14. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods of the forefathers worshipped beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your forefathers served beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. 
Then the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord, to serve other gods. It was the Lord our God himself who brought us and our fathers up out of Egypt from the land of slavery and performed those great signs before our eyes. He protected us on our entire journey and among all the nations through which we traveled. And the Lord drove out before us all the nations, including the Amorites who lived in the land, who too will serve the Lord because he is our God. Our second reading today is found in Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 6 through 21. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as the children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitfulest deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light be comes visible, for it is the light that makes everything visible. This is why it is said, Wake up, O sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be very careful, then, how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord will, what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to the God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Here ends our readings. I invite a stand for the profession of our faith. We use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of the Father, from whom we shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for these tithes, these gifts, these offerings, signs of your gracious love, Lord God, and we just pray that you will use these things and multiply them to your glory and to your praise for ministry, for the reaching of souls and for the encouraging of those in need, and Heavenly Father, we just pray you will use our very selves as well, we offer ourselves to you, knowing that you are God, and uh, use us to your praise. All this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ our resurrected Lord and Savior. 
Amen. Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship today. Glad that you're here. And welcome to those who are watching online too. God's blessings to you. We pray that we can be aware of God's presence and be living for Jesus. You'll see some announcements in your bulletin. There's quite a few this time. And uh, I'm just going to highlight the couple of them here, obviously. Jean Nash's funeral was held yesterday, and uh, some of the flowers up here are from that service too. And we just pray God's blessings to the family as they miss her and as they also remember uh, God's provision for her and her life. And we also think of, uh, we'll be praying for them too, and, but also for Mary. Mary Nash is uh, in the hospital, and she may be uh, coming home soon, uh, possibly Monday, but uh, injured her hip. And... Um, they do have her up walking. Apparently, that's what they need to do for this particular injury. And so that's good. But she's also got COVID. As long as, long as uh, that's the case, she won't be able to have visitors for a little while. So do keep her in prayer and for protection for her. Blessings on the family, too. Next Sunday, Pastor Bill Helland is going to be coming here. He is from the New Hope Free Lutheran Church in Sisseton, and he's going to be preaching and uh, probably leading worship, and we'll find out, and maybe we'll have we'll discuss that with the deacons yet so that he doesn't know all the things that happen here, but might make it smoother for him. But uh, So keep them in prayer too, and I ask you to remember them in your daily prayers uh, just for that congregation as they grow and as they uh, seek the Lord's guidance and direction, that they would uh, be the body of Christ in that place and reach out. We pray the same for us. There's a picnic coming up in Wapaton you're invited to, and that information is in there regarding the Perry Center. Also, a concert at the Evangelical Free Church over at Eagle Lake. That is uh, a concert you have to pay to get in for. You can get tickets ahead of time, but it sounds like a very good one. All right. Any other announcements? Okay. How about prayer requests? Any prayer requests or praises? And I, I should mention too that Stuart Flaw has been moved to Bethany, I believe, on university there. So uh, keep him in prayer too that he can be strengthened and uh, make some good progress there. Excuse me. Okay, we'll pray for Jean's family and Stuart and Mary. What else? Who else should we pray for in prayer? Excuse me. Any other prayer requests or praises? I'm sorry? Oh, yeah. For rain. What else? Other praises, prayer requests? <clears throat> we had a, a, a memorial family gathering at uh, the parsonage. Was that on Tuesday? It was a Monday. We backed it up a day. Yeah, and, and it just made it possible for everybody to be able to be there, you know, that could. And um, so that was a good experience here and we pray for Mary uh, Mary Gomer and uh, as she misses her sister too Fran Connors mm-hmm. yeah all right what else yeah Your mom to be healthy. Okay. We sure can. What's your first what's your first name? Patrick. Patrick? Okay. We will do that. All 
All right. What else? Other prayer requests or praises? All right. Pray for our troops in Afghanistan. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your grace, your mercy, your kindness you show us every day. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that you will just... Uh, open up our eyes and our ears and our hearts and minds to you in every way. And also these people we're praying for too. We lift up to you Jean's family as they miss her and also as they remember her and uh, recall things she did. And, and Lord, just uh, surround them with your love and uh, wrap them up in your arms and encourage them. Uh, help us to live like you, Lord. Lord, we pray for Stuart as he's uh, at Bethany there. And we just pray for um, renewed strength and encouragement for him and for Pat. And thank you for a place to be able to go. And we pray for good care and also uh, progress too. Lord, we lift up to you Mary Nash and she uh, misses her uh, uh, sister and not being able to be there, and uh, the other family too, not be able to be there, but just remind them of your presence and grant her help, and we pray for healing in her hip and uh, protection from further illness. Father, we lift up to you uh, those in need of rain, whether here or far away, and we pray, Lord, that they will uh, just be trusting in you for your provision. We praise you, Lord, and thank you. We ask for that rain in the name of Jesus. We pray for your comfort too for Mary Gomer and her family as they miss Fran. And uh, thank you for the help that you give, God, and for the faith that you give. We praise you for that, Lord. We pray for Patrick's mom to be healthy. We thank you for his prayer request here, God. And we pray that she would receive all that she needs from you and that she would uh, be a new person in you. We say thank you, Lord. We pray for our president and our vice president, and we pray for the Senate and the House of Representatives and the Supreme Court justices, all these people, God, who are leading this nation. We pray, Heavenly Father, that they will first seek you and seek your face and be uh, a new creation in Christ, that they would then lead us and that they would do your will and be wise. We pray for wisdom for them. We pray for our protection for our troops in Afghanistan as they withdraw. And Lord, we know that things aren't always done in good order. And we pray for protection anyway. And we pray for those people who uh, have been protected by our troops. Uh, we pray for those who have helped us for their protection. Lord, we pray for the Association of Free Lutheran Congregations scattered all over the United States and also other places and for the missionaries and for those in Canada. Lord, we pray that uh, you will help us to faithfully proclaim and teach and disciple uh, and to be close to you, Lord. Help us to be faithfully serving you in every way. And Heavenly Father, anything else that you see that we need, we pray that you'd grant. Uh, we often don't know what to ask for, but we ask for your help. We ask for your wisdom and guidance. We think of the New Hope Free Lutheran Church in Sisseton and Pastor Bill there and uh, the congregation. We pray strength to them and renewal and we pray that you will help them to find ways to reach out to their community and to invite people in. And we pray that people will see that sign and they'll just be drawn in by you, Lord, and also see the love of those people and be drawn to you. We pray the same for us, Heavenly Father. Bless our relationship together. And bless our weekend next Sunday. Lord, all these things to your praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing. Our next song is How Firm a Foundation, number 262 in your ambassador hymnals.
Are there any children who want to come up for the children's message? Any children want to come up? I've got, uh, we're going to talk about the glue god. I've got a bunch of glue things in here that we're not going to spill on the carpet or anything. We're going to be very careful of that. Anybody want to come? Come on up. Come on up. You might even get a small gift if you come up, but I'm not bribing anybody or making anybody feel bad. She, you could bring one for him, couldn't you? You know, there's all kinds of glue, isn't there? What kind of glue do you use? I use glue sticks. You use glue sticks? Mm -hmm. Those are pretty safe, aren't they? Yep. Because what, what happens if you have a glue stick? Ooh, that looks like a good one, doesn't it? See, you could drop it on the floor and it's no big deal, right? <laughs> that is very true. <laughs> this stuff could do that, right? I mean, you might have it like this, you're not looking, you tip it over, and it's slowly oozing out. But what's the purpose of glue, anyway? What, what do you use glue for? To glue stuff on, on something. Keep things together, right? Yeah? Yeah, but sometimes... This is a bad one. Sometimes they don't stick very long. They don't. They don't. You have to use the right kind of glue, right? Check this out. What do you think this is used for? What kind of glue? What do you glue together wood. with this? Oh, good job. Because it says wood glue. <laughs> you can read. And what's this for? You're opening it up, I see. Let's not open. Let's close it. Close it. Close it. Yeah. Paper. Okay, here's some glue. This is called Turbo Tacky Glue. And what do you do with it? All-purpose adhesive. You could use it for all kinds of stuff. Yep, there's that. Hey, this is kind of a fun one. Spray paint glue. <laughs> spray paint glue. <laughs> yep. You take this, and if you didn't want to, like, spray it all over, you could be outside, and you can spray this onto the paper. And then you can put something on it, and you didn't have to use your hand or anything like that. It just sprays on it. It's like a tack. It's really cool. This is a good kind of glue. <laughs> you, you could attach a, yep, a bug onto a spider web. Well, you know, the spider already has kind of a glue like that, doesn't it? Yeah. What's this called? This is for shoes. For shoes, yeah. You know, I'll tell you a secret. I used that on one of my shoes. It wasn't this shoe, but it was another one for church. It was like bending forward. I used this stuff on it. It worked great. <laughs> Isn't that cool? So there's shoe goo. You've got silicone. Uh... I'm not so sure that's a glue. <laughs> so anyway, and you've got this. What's this? It's Gorilla Glue. Gorilla Glue. You can, you you can grow all kinds of stuff. Yeah, like... Like wood, and you could... It can help for building stuff, like fixing toys and... Um, yeah, a all kinds of things. Of you can use it to glue gorillas to the tree. No. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> well, anyway, you can use it for lots of things. Well, we have all kinds of glue, and there's even more kinds of glue. I don't have one of these, but I don't know where it's at. Oh, it's got quick weld. Haven't used this up, haven't opened it yet, so you can still use it. You put them together, stir it, and it's like really good. It's like an epoxy of some sort. It really helps stick stuff. Hey, stuff. we can make some slime. <laughs> well, that's a great idea. But we need to get Activate. more of the ingredients. Well, we don't have all the ingredients, do we? But that's okay. But you know what? I don't want to talk about a better, oh, this is, they got other stuff like this too. This is like Velcro things. They've got glue in the back of them, you know. They're adhesive anyway. And you could stick them to things and do some cool stuff. But lots of things are used to hold things together. Um, we're missing one, uh, two. Super glue I don't have here. That's good stuff too. I remember when I was growing up, there was a guy who had a construction helmet on. They glued his helmet to something to a piece of wood up on top or metal. And he is holding onto his helmet and he's hanging by this thing like this. And I thought, wow, that's strong glue. You know, that's really strong glue. But tell you what, there's, in the, uh, you know what the strongest glue is? What? I don't know if you've seen it. It is the strongest glue in the world. And you wanna know what it is? Yeah? Don't open that. <laughs> All right, ready? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, it's in the Bible. Cha. Yeah. I'm gonna read it to you. And it comes, it's in the book of Colossians, chapter one, verse 17. I'm so sorry. Here we go. Colossians 1, verse 17, it says, He is before all things. They're talking about Jesus. He is before all things, and in Him all things hold together. Get it? He is before all things. Jesus is before all things, and in Him all things hold together. You know what that says to me? Because of Jesus, everything stays together. I'm talking, that's why our fingers don't fall off. <laughs> well, that's not a good example. Anything that is in existence today, I believe that if God were to remove his hand, if he were to take away his power from it, it would cease to be, it would stop being glued together. It, it ceased to exist. What I mean is, because of Jesus, Everything holds together. Everything is like glued together. You're going to learn about atoms in school someday, okay? And they, they say there's a positive and negative charge. Well, who made the atoms? God did. He made everything. He made the glue. He made you and you and me. He made everything. God made everything that exists. Well, you know, I was going to do some gluing here, but I don't think we're going to do some gluing with the paper. Well, what I'll let you do, though, is take a, you can have a glue stick. You can take that home with you or do it afterwards, but uh, this stuff doesn't spill. So here's a good one. You know it's good when it's purple and not all dried up. Here's one for you. You got one there? Yeah. Open it up and see if it's, is it good? Yeah, it looks good to me, doesn't it? All right. I well, want one. you want the spray one. <laughs> nope, sorry. <laughs> I would be probably in very big trouble from your grandma and grandpa. And <laughs> Who sprayed this in the back of the seat? <laughs> That's what we might hear. <laughs> What'd you say? Yeah. Yeah. He wouldn't move. She'd spray you to the pew, she said. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Can I have the lid? Please. Thank you so much. Hey, let's pray. Oops, you can have that if you want. Take that with you. You don't want it? Okay. You want the spray, don't you? Let's pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, that you are the one who holds all things together. You are the one that sustains life, and it doesn't come apart, but we live and we exist because of you. And we say, thank you, God. You're the originator of glue, and it's a miracle how you do it, and we praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for coming up. See ya. I've used that tacky glue stuff, that spray stuff, adhesive. I made a solar oven with my son uh, who was here today. We did that several years ago, but that was very helpful. <laughs> hey, let's invite you to stand first, and then let's go ahead and uh, 
have a prayer. We're reading from John 6, verses 51 to the almost the end of the chapter there. John 6, 51 to 69. And let's pray. Lord, bless our hearing of your word. Cause it to seek deep into us and overflow in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Then the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your forefathers ate manna and died, but he who feeds on this bread will live forever. He said this while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. Reading on, beginning at verse 60. On hearing it, many of his disciples said, This is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? Aware that his disciples were grumbling about this, Jesus said to them, Does this offend you? What if you see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? The Spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you are spirit, and they are life. Yet there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus had known from the beginning which of them did not believe and who would betray him. He went on to say, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled him. From this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. You do not want to leave too, do you? Jesus asked the twelve. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. <clears throat> Lord God, thank you for these words of Scripture, so faithfully transmitted and preserved through all these years. Bless us as we ponder it. Teach us by your Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. When people take offense to the gospel, it can become a very challenging time. So how are we to live in those moments when we encounter people who are offended by the gospel. And what happens when we do take that challenge? Have you noticed that there are a lot of people who take offense at just about anything today, especially in our country? People are offended at the name of sports teams. We just had a family stay with us who were from Ohio and they had to get the name of their uh, sports team changed. It's taking effect next year, but people are offended by statues of historical people. And if there's one thing wrong with that person, they want that statue down. People are offended by the Ten Commandments on government properties, and of course, lots of them have been removed. People are offended by our nation's history, and so they try to rewrite it. The very thing that people should be offended by in movies, such as profanity and other inappropriate things, are they're just used to it. And they see it as normal. Or they'll say, it's the way culture is. It's entertainment. By the way, if you happen to stream movies, I have a, an idea for you. And if you don't want to hear God's name used wrongly, or Jesus' name used wrongly, or you don't want to hear profanity or see immoral acts or whatever it might be, for $10 a month you can 
get vidangel, which will block out those little things that you don't want to hear. Uh, it's a streaming service. They, they use the ones you currently have, and they stream through that and are able to filter it out. They went through courts and so on like this, and they prevailed because they really aren't uh, doing anything that the uh, consumer doesn't want, and it doesn't hurt it. So it's a pretty neat thing, vidangel. That's my advertisement for it. Well, why do people get offended? Why is that? You see, each person has their own worldview, the way they look at the world. Something is seen by them as being universally right. They think that everybody should believe that because they believe it. And when someone does something differently, they take offense, greatly offended. And closely related to this topic is uh, worldly people telling Christians to be tolerant. You know, it seems like it's a mantra, it's a repeated phrase over and over. Christians, you should be tolerant. You should be tolerant. The dictionary definition of tolerance is this. Sympathy or indulgence for beliefs or practices differing from or conflicting with one's own. Tolerance is the act of allowing something, toleration, or the allowable deviation from a standard. You can kind of see where I'm going with this. When Christians stick to their biblical beliefs and call sin a sin, others are offended, and those Christians are labeled intolerant. But you know, these people who say we should be tolerant, of course, they're being intolerant of our intolerance, right? The worldly people are intolerant of our being intolerant. That doesn't make sense. That's a double standard, it's a hypocritical thing, and uh, it offends me. <laughs> the only problem is that God does not tell us to be sympathetic with things that are defined as wrong by God. God does not say, tolerate sin. You do that, you're opening a door for all kinds of evil and for Satan himself to come in. God says, do not sin, Exodus 20, 20 and John 11. To deviate from God's way is to sin. Now, Jesus offended people. We hear about it in our John 6 text today, right? Jesus offended people. Jesus said who he is. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Jesus said, if anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Those words alone caused division. Division among the Jews. And we know this because verse 52 tells us that the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves. They said, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? I suppose some argued, ah, he's speaking metaphorically. Others may have said, he speaks like he's a cannibal. Jesus, of course, was speaking spiritually. He was speaking uh, metaphorically too, but he spoke of giving himself for the world, which he did. And we read about that in John 3, when he said, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, I have eternal life. I think Jesus chose to push this metaphor to the limit uh, to more strongly put emphasis on how necessary he was for eternal life, how necessary even still today is for eternal life. This is a hard saying, and that's what the people said. This refers to that which is hard to accept, but not hard to understand. There's a difference. It's a little wonder that the disciples found the discourse of Jesus hard, says Barclay. The Greek word is scleros, which means not hard to understand, but hard to accept. <clears throat> the second reason people take offense, I think, is that they may be caught in their sin, and they don't want to admit it. In other words, their being offended is a cover-up for their sin, rather than admit the truth of their sin. You know what I mean. 
I mean, we've probably all been in a situation, something like that at some point in our life where you'd rather cover up the sin, tell no one about it, don't, don't mention it to anybody. But God is about exposing. We heard that in our lessons too, how he brings things to light. One person on a video I saw said, it's not an inability to understand, but a refusal to understand. The example Jesus gave of his flesh and body, listen to this, because they, in essence, made up a false charge of cannibalism, Jesus pushed the metaphor even further. Uh, he wanted to make clear the importance of his being the bread of life and crucial for them to only have eternal life through him. They could only be raised up at the last day to eternal life through Jesus. It's the only way it happened. It's ironic, isn't it, that Jesus told who he is and they understand his grand claims that he came down from heaven, but they find it hard to accept. Many don't believe it, or many didn't believe it, and same today. They don't want to believe it. It causes many to leave. It caused people to fall away. To hear that he calls himself God, that causes people to leave. I think it's really interesting that uh, you and I, are the ones who really, I mean, all people, are the ones who have caused offense to God at first. It wasn't us taking offense, it was His, offended by our sin, a rebellion. In Romans 1.18, it says, The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by the wickedness. They suppress the truth. If we allow Jesus or if we follow him as Christians, we're going to offend some people just the way it works, right? People will take offense at us. That's what Jesus taught. The world will hate you. We don't like it when people hate us, but you know, it's all right. People are going to do it anyway. I'd rather be faithful to Jesus. But how we live uh, should not be offensive. The message is going to be offensive. The gospel is offensive. But how we communicate it shouldn't be. When we try to speak the truth in love, people get offended because God's biblical truth opposes their personal and relative truth. That offends them. Our biblical worldview conflicts with personal worldview. People live in rebellion against God. We shouldn't be surprised Jesus was crucified. We shouldn't be surprised that they'd treat us differently. It's going to be the way it is. So we understand that. But we should not provoke people by being crude or by being rude or harsh or unkind. It is our message, the message of the gospel that offends, and so we don't need to be offensive. I think it's so important to try to be uh, compassionate to people to be understanding, to be good listeners. We don't want people to have an excuse because of our personality or what we do to say, I don't want their God. We'd rather, instead they'd say, wow, you know, they're so patient, you know, they're so understanding of me, even though I have been so cruel to them or so rude. Uh, they might perceive that, maybe not, but we, we want them not to turn away from Jesus because of us, but rather because of the gospel itself. I like this from 1 Peter 3, 15 to 16, a common verse, but, but in your hearts set apart Christ as Lord or as holy. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, <clears throat> keeping clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. That's the way it should be. And another verse about being calm or kind and gentle is this from Colossians 4, verse 6. Let your conversation be always full of grace. Isn't that neat? That's a challenge. I mean, it's a good one to memorize. Let your conversation always be full of grace, seasoned with salt, so you may know how to answer everyone. People are going to more likely listen if we're calm about it patient about it. 
We're to be kind, gentle, and respectful. Our words should be full of grace because our message is the good news of Jesus that is already offensive to the world. When people realize their position before God, their own sinfulness, they're going to be ready to hear the gospel. It'd be terrible for us personally to be the reason someone turns away from Jesus. We don't want that. We're not perfect. We know that. And God, in spite of our imperfections, still uses us. But we pray that we can be intentionally kind and patient. The gospel is a stench to those who are not saved, but a beautiful smell to those who are being saved. And that's from 2 Corinthians 15 to 16. Some will throw themselves at Jesus' feet and repent and ask to be forgiven. Others will throw themselves at you <laughs> and they're going to insult you and they're going to try to hurt you. Maybe you could say this if you're wondering about this. Maybe you could try this just as an experiment. Not that you have to do it or reply to it, but say on Facebook or an editorial to the Fargo Forum, marriages between one man and one woman, as Jesus said in the Bible, period, and then see what happens. <laughs> Just write that human life begins at conception. Each person is made in the image of God from, con you know, from conception. Just say that people are either male or female because that is how God made us. It isn't you they are offended at. It is Jesus whom you are representing. In John 6, today's gospel, Jesus said in verse 61, Does this offend you? Then he asked, What if you see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? In verse 66, From this time, any of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. You do not want to leave too, do you? The Greek implies a no answer. Then Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. In Luke 7, 23, it's kind of like a parallel. Blessed is the man who does not fall away on account of me. Blessed is that person. And the English Standard Version says, Blessed is the one who is not offended by me. Isn't that so true? You're blessed. You are blessed. Don't be offended by him. And when people get offended by the gospel through you, pray for them. From Paul's letter to the Ephesians, verses 6 and 11. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. When we <clears throat> stand up for biblical truths in our life, in our family's life, in the life of our community, when we stand firm on those biblical truths of God, we're going to encounter resistance, most likely. Maybe not, but most likely. Because people are offended by the truth of God, by the gospel of God. We live in a fallen and sinful world that desperately needs Jesus. Let's live our lives for Jesus in such a way that we stand firm on what he said and unashamedly live for him. This causes him to be praised. And we become a living testimony of Jesus in our life. We become his ambassadors. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word and help us to live for you. We know that the gospel is offensive to the world, but Lord, we also know that you prepare people's hearts and that you are about exposing sin and speaking the truth for what it is. Help us to do that too and to shine your light into the darkness. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. This next song is a uh, neat one I have not, did not know until um, coming into the AFLC, but Living for Jesus, number 506. Striving to 
What a beautiful song, huh? I invite you to stand. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, 
so.